hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer and um, so today's video i'm going to be reading to you guys uh, this post that i read on the uh, bbc pigeon uh, and let me just read it exactly how they posted it so it says augustate police command say they don't arrest on top accused say he plan with his wife to defy one 16 year old he can say according to the statement from the command we say they make the arrest on Friday, 10th uh, December 2021. Pastor Peter Taiwo of Christ Apostolic Bible Church, Alaja Oke Saje Abiakuta, and his wife Elizabeth Taiwo are connect together for him to defy one 16 years old choir member of the church. The police say they arrest the pastor and his wife after the victim lodged complaint for the adulter divisional headquarters. According to her, when she go to the church for choir practice, the pastor wife call her to go meet the pastor inside their room because the pastor be one send a message. She say as soon as she entered the room, the pastor wife locked the door from outside. Then the pastor come overpower her and forcefully sleep with her. So I don't even know. Do you know what? I'm in the pigeon English mode? I have to switch to English mode in my head, you know. Okay, so basically, for anyone that does not understand what I say, is basically there's this girl, she's a 16 year old, she's in the choir. She went for choir practice, and the wife told her that the husband wants to send her on an errand. She sent her to the husband's room, and she went in there, and then the wife then locked the door on the outside and left her there for her husband to. Okay. Uh, when I read that, I decided to make a video about it because there's so much that's been going through my mind recently. A lot of you may not have followed the story of uh, Suleiman that has been going around for some time now. So apparently, from accusations of the house boys that used to live in Suleiman's house, they came out to say, uh, a lot of you may have heard about them, Amos and Joseph. One of them lived in Suleiman's house for, house for 10 years. I think maybe around one eight years, something like that. And they were speaking about it and they said, um, they were narrating a lot of stories about girls in the choir. And two, the one I find funny is that they were actually girls that uh, were fighting, not necessarily, one girl got upset because she found out that she's not the only one. There's another one. These are the allegations, oh, eh, eh, that there's another girl, that Suleiman, Suleiman is a married man, oh, right? And she was upset because she found out that there's another girl. So this is someone that is dancing with somebody's husband and she is angry, upset that there's another girl. She did see the audacity. <laughs> Anyways, and then because you see, when they started narrating a lot, a lot of these stories, there were stories where, you know, from what these boys have said, that even the wife was told about it. And there was a case where they had to come to a sitting room and uh, the husband was trying to deny and then the wife was when you hear some of i don't want to go into all of the stories you can go listen to the whole you know there'll be series it's actually a series of videos about these things and i i have always struggled in understanding what positions these wives of a lot of pastors that get accused of a lot of these things what positions they took in these situations when these things were happening and the same thing Fatou Yubo when he was dragged and Timmy Dakolo's wife and there were people that felt like from the way the story was coming out it's like the wife must know because the amount of the traffic of girls or you know they speak about and a lot of the accusations how can your husband be accused so many times of some things for example Otobo she got to the point of even explaining explaining when they asked her the size of Suleiman, if you know what I mean, and she was explaining the size. Suleiman's wife, by the, by the way, her name is called Lizzie. Joseph, who is Amos' brother, you know, in his interview, talked about where there was actually in a sitting room where this whole matter was, saga was being discussed, whatever. And the wife was there. The wife was there. And when Otobo happened, she came out like this straight faced on camera and said that i have known my husband for so and so years a woman has never been a problem in my marriage 
And I thought to myself, so even if she's going to say she does not believe all the stories, she cannot claim that those accusations she has never heard about them. She cannot say that those things do not cause katakata. From what uh, Joseph was saying, it caused a bit of katakata in the house. You know, when I tell people that a lot of these so-called pastors or ministers, whatever you call them, and they are carry on. It's been a lot of it's a reason a lot of people have walked away from Christianity because they will say, How come they look up to these people to a great extent? I've only said they look on to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, not your pastor, not your GO, not your because they can fail, right? But at the same time, there is something about saying, Okay, this is a pastor that I, I'm on under his you know preaching every Sunday. The, to an extent, there are some things, and he preaches about don't do this, and, and then you find out that everything he has been preaching. Don't do. He is doing it. Right? Joseph was saying, I, I don't want to say some of the conversations that I've had with Joseph personally, but you know, there were some things that Joseph was saying and he said that to, to hear the pastor he respected so much speak against and say, eh, some of you men, this is what Joseph told me, right? He said, some of you men, you will go and uh, contact a girl and then you will do this and you will do that. You will go and block her in such and so place. You will go and meet her in such and so place. And then he was, he said that these are basically what he is doing. This is what Joseph is saying that he is using to preach. He's actually preaching against what he is doing. How do you expect these young children, young boys and girls, that are, how are they going to? It's, it's, it's conflicting for these people's brains to say, ah, you so what then do you preach i should take seriously look at i'm going back to this idea of a lot of the men that are accused a lot of these things a lot of them will not carry on a lot not all will not carry on if their wives are not um what's the word now sometimes english fails me you know maybe let me say a bit of cover up a lot of the time they discover up for their from their wives it's still that nigerian thing that no matter what happens, stand by your husband. So people would rather stand by their husband than stand for, for biblical truth. People would rather defend their, you know, save your marriage. They would rather save their marriage than save souls. Going back to this one now, this woman, imagine her own husband. One, she is not worried that my husband is bad. I, I don't understand this kind of loyalty to a man. To the point of even helping him to bring a, a, a young underage girl to come and force this kind of thing on, on the girl. I don't understand it. And then, so another important point I want to make is this. You see this arrest? This arrest is because they are not mega GOs. That is a fact. If you think they were mega GO that they'll be arrested, in wrong. In short, it's the mega GO that will arrest you that tried to talk about it. This girl went home and reported probably to her parents, and the parents called the police. And do you know that if they were if that was a mega GO, the girl said may be afraid to tell her parents. Or even if she told her parents, her parents may be afraid because they know that this mega GO has all the money to do whatever. And even your law pass would not have moved because the mega GO, in short, the minute you found out that the, when uh, um, uh, Timmy Dakolo accused the uh, uh, Fato Ibo, what happened? What happened? Timmy Dakolo's wife, what happened? She be, it was even Fato Ibo that now was not trying to get Timmy Dakolo locked up. Remember, it was it all played out here on social media, that the police came to his front gate to come and collect him, and they were going to take him all the way to Abuja. So the accused is the one that is now, is now in power. To be dragging the person that is accusing him all the way to Abuja. He's not accused, has been dragged to come and answer of the accusation. No. Are you seeing what I'm trying to explain? The same thing when Otobo came out to speak. What ended up happening? Otobo was locked up now. She there was an interview where she was uh, speaking and said, they locked me up, blah, blah, blah. She said, Otobo said, though, that Suleiman dragged her, he invited her to Nigeria. She didn't know what the plan was. She got to Nigeria and he got her locked up. She said they froze her account. They did this, they did that. So the accused is not the one. Oh, and then when you tell people that religion is part of the problem in Nigeria, they will say, eh, this is a lie. Don't talk that. Don't talk that. Don't talk that. It's part of the problem in Nigeria. 
Imagine how powerful a so-called pastor should be that he is the accused and he is still the one that is locking up the person that accused him. How do you expect tomorrow another girl to be able to come out and speak? Don't be surprised that a lot of this, a lot of Nigerian pastors, when they die, their children will be coming out from left, right and center. Don't be surprised. Some of them already have children out there. Let's leave it at that. But their wives do not know. That's another thing these women do not realize. Their wives do not know. They're, because when, you, when a woman is keeping quiet when things like this are happening, or in this particular case, the woman is even part of getting a young girl arranged for her husband. If the woman did not lock the door outside, they would say, okay, maybe truly she did not know. She sent the girl there to go and do an errand. But she locked the door outside. What does that tell you? They planned it. Imagine that. A lot of people that want to be keeping quiet, keeping quiet will not protect our daughters. It will not protect our young daughters from things like this keep continuing happening in Nigeria. You know why people should speak up? Because it can be your child tomorrow. This arrest now, for my mind, I'm like, mm. because it's not a mega pastor. There are some mega ones that have done worse until tomorrow. We have to have a society where nobody should be above the law. That's going to change all of these things. Imagine this story. All I'm saying is this. They say this story. You know, they are doing the arrangey and getting involved. There are a lot of them at a higher level. And then when people come and speak, she be, um, uh, Mikey Bamiloye now, uh, the evangelist Mikey Bamiloye that said that anybody that speaks about pastors is demonic or whatever he, way he said it. You see what has happened to this monger now? Is that not demonic? Bamiloye will not speak about this matter now. He will not speak. We that are speaking about it, that's the pastor now. We that are speaking about it, we are the demons now. You see what I'm trying to Where is he now to speak up against something like this? Anyways, I wanted to share that with you guys. But what I really want to share is this. This one is at a small scale. It's a minor G.O. He's not a mega G.O. That is why he's entering trouble. There are some at a higher level that have done worse things than that. But you know what? Nothing will ever happen to them because they are mega. Anyways, I'm going to leave this video here. As always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.